Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Good morning, everyone. So today I will be talking about the paper that is entitled Thrombosis and Thrombocytopenia after the Chad Ox one and COVID-19 vaccination, so which is also a AstraZeneca vaccination. So this paper is published by Schools et al. So just giving a so before diving into the paper, so there was this uh, news published uh, on April 4, 2021 that the total 169 cases of this thrombosis in the cerebral venous sinus as well as 53 cases of this splanchnic vein thrombosis was reported uh, uh, after the use of like AstraZeneca vaccine. So which drove the research and this paper focuses on like what might be the mechanism or how the patient arrived in the hospital after that vaccination. So uh, just a quick uh, introduction of the primary author. She is MD PhD in the Oslo University Hospital, Norway, and uh, she's in Department of Hematology. So he, uh, on the left side, uh, is the primary author, as well as the senior author is on the right side. So this paper is basically a report the the hospital and the doctors are reporting. You know, once uh, the patients arrived uh, after the vaccination, like several days, and how it was related to thrombosis upon vaccination. So. Uh, what are thrombosis and thrombocytopenia? So thrombosis is basically a local coagulation or clotting of the blood in a part of the circulatory system. So it can uh, happen anywhere in the uh, body because we have circulation throughout the body, right? So thrombocytopenia is uh, the condition where there is a low uh, count of blood platelets in the circulation. So in this paper, uh, this thrombocytopenia and thrombosis is suspected to be caused after the vaccination from the AstraZeneca vaccination. So uh, a quick intro, uh, we all know about this vaccination now, but this is a Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine and it is a viral vector vaccine, which is given through intramuscular injection. And it is a uh, adenoviral vector that is given to the patients through the vaccine. So uh, on this paper, they utilized the uh, population sample in the Norway. Uh, so what they are, uh, this paper discusses is that the, you know, all the healthcare professionals, they did not have direct contact to uh, somebody in uh, uh, COVID-19. So they gave uh, this vaccination to those particular group of people. So basically the healthcare professionals younger than 65 years of age. And 132,686 persons, they were uh, given this vaccination in Norway. And uh, these uh, results were based on after the first dose of this vaccination. So what they found was that uh, after 10 days of the first dose, in most of the cases, they found thrombosis and severe thrombocytopenia. And uh, on this paper, they are reporting five of those healthcare workers, and uh, they will uh, brief from the starting to the end of their treatment uh, uh, following the vaccination and the uh, symptoms development. So uh, the case report they present uh, for the first patient is that uh, she is a 37 years old female, and so she started developing headache uh, one week after vaccination. Uh, so then she went to the hospital and what they found from the scanning was that there was a thrombosis in the cortical veins, uh, as well as these areas in the brain, uh, left transverse sinus, as well as the sigmoid left sinus. So they also found uh, there was a low platelet count, uh, uh, which is the condition for thrombocytopenia. So they administered this drug. And what this drug does is that it is uh, an anticoagulant that helps prevent the formation of blood clots. But what they found later was that there uh, was a massive cerebral hemorrhage and edema as well. So uh, the platelet trans they also tried doing the platelet transfusion as well as they tried to do the craniectomy just to relieve the uh, intracranial pressure but she died two days after surgery so uh i chose this paper mainly because you know i wanted to know how this uh, um, 
these symptoms are being developed or how these reactions uh, leading to blood clot was happening. So this paper provided the you know basics of, okay, if I have a vaccination, then what are the course of reaction that goes in my body all the way to the treatment in the clinic? And then the ultimate outcome, which might be uh, sometimes not good uh, as well. So uh, another case report, uh, the paper uh, discusses is about the patient uh, two who is uh, 48, uh, 42 years old female. And she also developed a headache uh, one week after vaccinations. I think it's pretty common after, you know, first dose or second dose of any vaccination to have headache developed, but you know, there might be more severe outcomes in some rare patients. So uh, after the development of headache, she also started uh, reducing the consciousness. So she got admitted after uh, day three uh, uh, of the symptom. And what they found from the scanning again was thrombosis in the brain. And uh, they also did the hemicraniectomy and uh, administered this anticoagulant drug just to relieve the pressure and uh, try to get rid of that clot. Uh, and they also tried multiple platelet transfusion in that patient. Uh, so along with this one, uh, the, she was also uh, administered these uh, two drugs like methyl uh, prednisolone, which is uh, used in reducing the inflammation in the body, as well as they did this intravenous immunoglobulin administration uh, just to get the immune system active and fight against uh, that reaction that's being happening in the body. But she, uh, unfortunately, she also died after two weeks uh, due to the increase in intracranial pressure and uh, severe cerebral hemorrhagic infarction. So uh, the other case report for patient UK. Three, yes. Are you advancing your slides? Seems like we're stuck with the case. Uh, again? Patient one, yeah. We are, we are seeing patient one right now wow. still. I'm already in patient three. Oh, yeah. Why I was, is I wanted it? The rest, right? Well, thank you for letting me know. Uh, you, let me try to stop share and okay. I think I last time during my general exam also same thing happened. I don't know why. Can you see another slide now? Yeah, right now is patient, patient two. two. Patient two. Okay. okay. Yes, so uh, just briefly going back to the patient too because the slide was stuck in patient one. So uh, she also developed headache, but the other addition to her was that she had reduced consciousness when she got admitted. And uh, it's a similar case. So not just these five patients, uh, it has been reported that most of the times the thrombosis happens either in the brain uh, area or the, you know, uh, abdominal area like like the majority of the thrombosis has been seen in those areas and from like patient one and two we find that both thrombosis occurred in the brain and they are they tried to relieve the pressure by doing uh, craniectomy but what happened is that she died after two weeks uh, due to i think you know these drugs cannot uh, get rid of the clots as well as the pressure is building to those uh, circulatory system in the brain and they ultimately die So can you see my other slide for patient three? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, patient three. Yes, so patient three is a um, 32 year years old male. And so another common symptom we see from the vaccine vaccination is the back ache. So, but it started one week after vaccination. And then um, uh, upon arriving to the hospital, as he was found to have severe isolated thrombocytopenia, that means there was a low uh, blood platelet count. And uh, they also found that uh, there was a thrombosis in several uh, branches of the portal vein with occlusion of this intrahepatic means liver. So yeah, the circulatory system in the liver. Uh, and uh, what they did for uh, this patient was that they treated with uh, the immunoglobulin uh, intravenous for two days, as well as uh, they administered this anti-inflammatory drug as well as the uh, anticoagulant drug. But uh, so for this patient, he was discharged from the hospital on day 12 uh, in good health. So I think the difference between patient one and two was brain and uh, they had to do the craniectomy for those two patients i think it's more complicated if it happens in the brain so this patient uh, is alive compared to those two patients 
and for uh, patient four uh, is a 39 years old female and she, she also reported uh, abdominal pain as well as headache eight days after vaccination and she had a mild thrombocytopenia like but she was discharged, uh, discharged because the symptoms were not very worse. But then she had to come back to the hospital again after two days due to uh, increased uh, headache. So uh, what they found now was that she had massive thrombosis in the cerebral veins as well as the cerebral hemorrhagic infarction. So uh, they started the treatment again, the same treatment for uh, anticoagulant as well as they gave intravenous immunoglobulin and the anti-inflammatory drug. So the platelet count normalized within two days for this patient and she was discharged after uh, 10 days. So for the last patient is a 54 years old female. Uh, she had a prior history of hypertension and she was undergoing hormone replacement therapy. So uh, she started developing stroke-like uh, symptoms as well as hemiparesis on left side of the body, like semi-paralysis. And uh, she was found to have right frontal hemorrhage. And they, so again, she was treated with treatment, the same treatment, anticoagulant, immunoglobulin, uh, and the anti-inflammatory anti drugs as well. But she had massive cerebral vein thrombosis with global edema and growth of hematoma. So she, she also died of uncontrollable increase in intracranial pressure. So I think it's more complicated when it occurs in the brain. So uh, on this table, they summarize uh, the different characteristics of uh, what the blood count was, what was the uh, marker of private analysis, and what was the amount. And here uh, they uh, say that the, all the patients except uh, one patient was given a low molecular weight heparin. So it has been shown, you know, it has been already reported that all these uh, symptoms and all these thrombosis are like the heparin induced thrombocytopenia. So they also fear that maybe that heparin treatment you know when they presented in the hospital they already had those thrombosis so they tried to treat with heparin on those patients but what it happens is that there is a feedback mechanism that goes against the heparin and again induces those uh, thrombocytopenia so that's what they feared as well but from all these like five patients like two patients had full recovery but the three phase patients it was fatal so on this one, so what they tried to do is that they they used this PF4, platelet factor 4, uh, binding to a analog of heparin just to find, find out uh, the reactivity of platelet factor 4. So on the right panel, uh, we can see that platelet factor 4 is produced by uh, platelets, but it uh, binds with high affinity with heparin. So when it binds with heparin, then there is the uh, development of antibodies against those PF4. And now what it does is that uh, again, uh, there is a positive feedback loop which activates more platelets and which results in the aggregation of platelets. So PF4 uh, in a normal condition, it inhibits local uh, antithrombin activity and also it promotes coagulation. But now, you know, that they are suspecting a link of like this vaccine may be acting as as similar to heparin because here on the uh, on the next figure I will show you but the very first uh, like they uh, again they used this uh, the enzyme against this antibody against this PF4 uh, using ELISA to detect the level of those antibodies and what they used was that high concentration of heparin as a control because we know for sure that heparin is causing those coagulation and then they also used the functional activity of serum of a patient that had already like a typical heparin induced thrombocytopenia as a control uh, to compare uh, the vaccination induced uh, thrombocytopenia and thrombosis. So on this figure, as uh, they saw the, all those treatment and how it affected the platelet count uh, in those patients. And we can see that for patient one, when they started and the platelet transf transfusion, we, we do not see uh, the amount of platelet going back to normal or increasing. So the patient ultimately died. 
and then we, we, we can see for patient two, as soon as they start the platelet transfusion, then the platelet uh, counts uh, appear to be like normal and increasing in patient two and patient uh, four, as well as patient three, but not much in patient five. So uh, what they look um, further is that the platelet aggregating potential of the serum of those patients in functional testing. For, the, for, for that, what they used was that the serum from the those patients, uh, the what's being shown in this figure, and then they treated with either saline um, or heparin in a low concentration or heparin in high concentration. And they used these healthy donor uh, as well as the patient with the similar like heparin induced thrombocytopenia. And here we can see that for patient one, even just for uh, you know, sal saline or low heparin or high heparin, we can see the platelet aggregation aggregation is always higher after the vaccination. But compared to patient two, patient two, uh, we do not have uh, increase in platelet aggregation. But patient three and patient four also have a very high platelet aggregation in just like a control control group. And patient five also has uh, the high platelet aggregation. But here we can see that for a healthy donor serum, we do not see uh, any uh, platelet aggregation because even if there is a, is a heparin and there, is, because what I read was that they already have, like our body already have those antibody against the heparin. So our body will try to control, control as much possible when uh, encountered with heparin. So, uh, we can see that there is no platelet uh, aggregation in a healthy donor serum. But then uh, with healthy uh, patient with uh, uh, HIT, which is heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, we can see that there is no platelet aggregation in the control. But when we treat with heparin, either low or high, like in the low one, we see a lot of platelet aggregation in those patients. So, uh, so they uh, they uh, in the discussion they they uh, suggest that that the, these five cases have been found in in the hospital where with this venous thromboembolism in unusual sites mainly in brain and in the abdominal or liver area and uh, it occurred uh, from seven to ten days after vaccination of AstraZeneca vac vaccine. And what they detected was a high level of antibodies to this uh, platelet factor four uh, complexes, and they also uh, uh, discussed that they, this is they termed this as a vaccine-related variant of spontaneous heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. So it's similar to the heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, but it it is suspected that the vaccination is causing a similar reaction in the body of some some patients, not in all the cases. And um, they uh, they used this low molecular weight. So they only uh, prior to all these assay and all the treatment began, they, they, they wanted to uh, protect the patient. So they started, they, they started like first treatment was a low molecular weight heparin. So uh, they, they fear that may, maybe uh, this heparin treatment, uh, in, like together with the vaccination, maybe it's making the condition worse. That they, they don't know that, but because uh, you know there might be a positive feedback against the heparin and then causing more thrombosis in the patients. So uh, they uh, say that you know the platelet counts increased after uh, the treatment with intravenous uh, immunoglobulin and then uh, this uh, prednisolone. So what they suggest is that they should, the physicians, wherever, you know, if there is a suspected patient with some of these symptoms, then they should have a screening and a very low uh, threshold for ELISA testing for those PF4 antibodies and then maybe initiate those uh, immunoglobulin treatment or platelet transfusions so, so, so that the condition uh, do not get worse from there. That's all I have. So this paper does not have a lot of research in it, but you know I wanted to know more about how this is causing blood clot because in my country everyone took this vaccination, including my parents. So I was just more curious to know more about it, and I found this paper. So I think we can open the floor for discussion. Anything in this area, if somebody wants to add more. 
Well, uh, maybe I missed it, but th these are the like blood clots everybody is concerned with, correct? So I thought heparin was like, like how you standardly treat blood clots, but you should not use heparin. Yes. So, you know, mo yeah, mo in most cases, like heparin is used for anticoagulant, right, to clear the blood clot. But here, what they are suggesting is that we, they don't know, but they are suggesting that, you know, because they used heparin in the beginning for the treatment of those patients with thrombosis. And then they fear that this thrombocytopenia, so they are try trying to treat thrombosis with uh, Platelet that is heparin, right, or heparin analogs, but now they are fearing about heparin induced thrombocytopenia. At the same time, if they are trying to control thrombosis, then there is this fear of thrombocytopenia caused by those treatment. So it's not for sure, but they are trying to, you know, they turn this as a like heparin induced thrombocytopenia. So I think, you know, there has to be some criteria for using heparin in the first place. So but they are just suggesting uh, this as like you know heparin helping with thrombosis but causing thrombocytopenia in the same place so this is interesting uh, paper but um uh, probably i might have missed this um information do you know because in the um, most lots of people um after age at least um, i know that um, 40 or so they take the um, uh, blood thinner. Do you think it happened to somebody else who is, has been taking uh, this um, blood thinner for a long time and they are okay? Or should we, I think, uh, did they advise that we should take um, the vaccine along with some blood thinner or something? Yeah. Like aspirin. People yeah. take pretty much aspirin. That's true. I think in some, you know, I did not find any like articles in particular that uh, uh, discussed this correlation. But, you know, as we all hear from the news uh, every day that they are suggesting, you know, if there is a fear of that symptoms, then we have to, we, it's better to take like anticoagulant together. But, you know, case by case, it's different, right? The same treatment, uh, somebody is alive and the same treatment same procedure somebody dies you know so i think it's it depends on case by case and depends on the body you know so we cannot really compare well, one vaccination or one drug you know i think i think it's very complicated but i tried to do more research to find more cases of this blood right. clot, but yeah. i ended up i understand that part i what, yes. what i'm saying that you know because lots of people have been taking um uh, blood thinner uh, mm -hmm. Common, common part of the, you know, medication or something like that. And um, so do you know whether these patients were on this drug, like aspirin or something else, blood thinner? No, they do you they know did any say, information about that? No, they did not say like that. But here on this one, they said, so here, so medication and admission. So this patient one was taking contraceptive pill, patient two was on this contraceptive uh, vaginal ring, but patient three was completely normal, patient four, and patient five was just in those like hypertensive agents as well as the hormone replacement therapy. That's that's all they say on these patients. I, they do not particularly say this drug or like that. Yeah, I think, you know, the blood clot, uh, there is more research might be done right now, but you know we do not see a lot of papers. So I I was trying to get uh, you know as many resources, but there is like news or some statement published published by a government or a healthcare agency, but there is not a you know particular data to back it up. But maybe in few weeks we might start to see those you know research being done. Maybe they will try to find a particular pathway. Uh, related to these like heparin treatment or thrombocytopenia more targeted like what pathway is being hampered but well, we, as you, yes, if you calculate if we calculate the percent of uh, patients having these kind of conditions so if you calculate what would be what would be the percentage of um of patients uh, suffering from this kind of blood clot um like is like 0.1 percent or something like so because i know that millions of people have already uh you know um taking this this vac vaccine all over the world and some part of the world um but i don't say 169 case out of how so, many uh, do you know that's in, what is that yes so here of, i mean uh, millions 
let's see here they are saying that out of 132,686 okay. you know they are they are they are they are saying that they, this many like is it not okay okay yes but okay, okay. you know this is just like one particular country so we cannot compare in a global scale so so i i also missed that other part also this is 169 patients probably are is there any gender bias like it's happening on the males or yes, yes, females yes. or something that's, like that that's true they, they found uh, uh, these more in females than males that's what they reported but the, it was not in a, in this research but i found it in one of the health article that I more see. of the females uh, are being like seen with this case yes yeah, i i did notice um uh, granted, it's small, small, small sample size. It's only five patients, but at least the uh, it, it's interesting that the three women who this was fatal for were all on some form of hormonal therapy, whether it was like birth control, contraception, or hormone replacement therapy. Yeah, the patient one, two, and five, and those were, and I mean, obviously such a small sample size but there is that conversation around where it's like oh we're freaking out about blood clotting um for the vaccine when birth control actually has a higher risk of blood clot than the vaccine so i found it interesting that that those uh, birth control hormonal therapies at least in this again caveat majorly small sample size were consistent in those that it, this was fatal for Yes, so I, almost like exacerbating and uh, or, or increasing a risk factor that already exists. That's true. Yes. That's a good point. Yes. A good yes. Point. Yeah. I noticed that as well um, on the uh, so interesting thing because I went to try and uh, confirm what I was remembering from medical school. But there is a difference in um, risk for prothrombotic events. Uh, between individuals who are taking estrogen therapy um, orally versus non-oral administration. So such as a vaginal ring and in a 54 year old female, I might imagine hormone replacement therapy might be done transdermally. Um, so, I mean, we obviously on, on patient five, we don't have a delivery method, but the idea there of like risk for prothrombotic events is like uh, when you take uh, oral estrogen, a lot of that gets um, first uh, passed over to the liver, and that kind of disrupts the um, metabolism of a lot of clotting factors uh, and, and things and creates kind of a prothrombotic environment. What I thought was also very interesting is, again, four females, one male, tiny sample size, but all of the females, uh, in terms of anatomically where the thrombosis was occurring, it was occurring in the brain. Um, whereas the one male, um, it was occurring in the portal system. And I'm wondering, is there is there any analysis of BMI, possibility of cirrhosis in that case, which might also, you know, are, are these all, are we looking at predisposing conditions for, um, you know, kind of this pro this 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 pro thrombotic environment, and you know the the administration of this vaccine um, just upregulates the inflammatory system, and when the um, inflammatory the inflammatory system and the uh, thrombotic system are talking to each other and upregulating one upregulates the other. Yeah, interesting point. But anyway, we are not really sure these five cases really is due to the vaccine. It's caused by the yes. vaccine anyway, right? Yes. I think it's just Yeah, if you go back to the you have a in vitro completely the aggregation analysis, right, with the serum. So clearly there's something yeah this one pre aggregation potential serum so in some patient they have something can cause aggregation right so i don't know those are factors in the serum is it before the injection of the vaccine or so after of course after. I, in this case i don't think they have pre <laughs> pre mu serum right that's right yeah, it would be nice if you have premium serum and other immunization, then you see a difference, you can see, oh, probably it's caused by injection vaccine. 
But anyway, something is there in yes. the serum, right? Yes. Especially in the patient one, is that a very, very clear case, right? Yes. Yeah, I think, you know, like now is the hot topic. Yeah, even like, with heparin, you still see the yes, aggregation. Yes. So yes. that's something that's really causing aggregation. Yeah, I think, you know, we just have to wait for more research to be done. You know, how, like, up, like, maybe in vitro studies using these, you, you know, we cannot just rely on patients being admitted to the hospital and their data and say, okay, this is, this vaccine is causing blood clot, you know. Did I miss something? I'm so sorry, just before, uh, the healthy donor, just meaning, like, So that's the not, I, I mean, like, in the sense of healthy donor, but did the healthy donor also receive the vaccine? It might kind of answer that question a bit, but I don't know if they mentioned because no. that could be pre-immunized or if that is a healthy donor that did receive the vaccine because that could kind of answer that question a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's no vaccination, like just the healthy serum that they have. Yes. Can I ask a question? Yes. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Hear. Okay. So I wasn't clear about, uh, I know that they had uh, symptoms that were similar to a stroke. Do you know if they gave them any sort of um, blood, I think it's called a clot buster drug, and is that similar to heparin to help prevent, you know, um, reducing the amount of blood flow to the brain? I missed that. Okay, can you repeat that again? I'm trying to find if the healthy donor... Like, okay. Well, so. you know how um, when individuals have strokes, they have similar type of symptoms because there is a clot in, yes. in the brain, one of the blood vessels. And uh, I know you said they couldn't treat them with heparin, but did they mention anything about treating them with that? It's called a clot buster drug for individuals who are suffering from strokes. Uh, no, I, 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 I did not see that particular drug, but they used the heparin analogs, which is, you know, like, we does not cause the similar effect, like immune reaction in the body, but they did use other heparin analogs for the treatment as well. After, so the first thing was the low molecular weight heparin, but the other treatments were heparin uh, analogs, not the heparin itself, but not, not that, that drug particularly. Thank you, UK. You're welcome. Let me find that one. Yeah, we, we can discuss more when I just make sure about that patient. So about the P the PF4, anti-PF4 antibody. And, uh, what, what is it? Can you repeat it about PH? You have increased antibody against the PH4, right? Anionic, something to do with PH4 after yes. with the pace, with the case, the five case reported here, right? You have yes. increased anti-PF4 anti in the serum or something? Do so, you have that slide? Yes, I think uh, it is being produced by uh, by the platelets itself, but then when, the, you know, it's like a positive feedback loop. So whenever there is like heparin or heparin-like molecules, okay. then the platelets is increasing more PF4 trying to catch it. And then when it's increased, then the antibodies try to go and grab it. And then all the platelets, platelets are aggregating uh, each other, then it's causing thrombosis. But it is not really induced by the vaccine. No, anyway, right? no, it's, it's, it's so mo in most cases, even, you know, just even. the heparin treatment also, we can see PF4 and the positive loop. Because uh, when I went ahead and researched more on how heparin is causing, you know, helping anticoagulant, they say that it's not 100% anticoagulant. And heparin will, you know, in turn, after some period of treatment, start to cause this positive feedback and more PFO antibodies. Then it might, might cause coagulation in the end due to just like more heparin treatment. That's why, like, they said this for like two days, three days, just the limitation of the dose, and they, they cannot go over a certain limit with these treatments. I have a quick question. Yes. So, when they presented that figure and they gave the platelet count, was that at the point when patients showed up, 
because this patient this patient had thrombosis and you can have thrombosis only because you have a high platelet count else you will be bleeding instead of clotting so what is this platelet count when was it taken because if it was taken after in after giving heparin then it makes sense that they had thrombocytopenia because heparin will kill all the platelets and you will have a low platelet count Yes. When was that platelet count taken? Was it before or after? It was after because uh, what they said in the discussion was that, you know, whenever uh, they found out there was a thrombosis, they started that low molecular weight heparin in all the patients. That's why, you know, like they, there is this doubt even with those uh, like uh, doctors, you know, saying in the discussion that maybe mm -hmm. the heparin treatment, you know, they had to give the heparin because there was what they are saying is fatal thrombosis was already mm -hmm. there. So it was like a panic. Oh, we have to give heparin right now to, uh, you know, like stop thrombosis. But then they are writing this paper based on everything else. So I think, you know, the heparin might be causing all, um, the low blood, blood platelet count. And what they are saying is that after platelet transfusion, it came back to normal in like two or three patients. But everybody was given uh, the low molecular weight heparin in the beginning just to control those thrombosis from getting worse. Okay, so is there a point that they shouldn't be giving low molecular weight heparin yes. when you give this vaccine? Yes, that's that's true. Yeah, that, 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 that's what they are saying. But, you know, I think they just wanted to get this data published. Maybe just try to show some connection with the vaccination and blood clot. But, you know, they, they are saying, uh, focusing on that we gave heparin, you know, so it might be causing, but I think, you know, they think that there is still a relation with the blood clotting and vaccination. That That is one of the major caveat of this paper, because that's what I was thinking. You know, you are saying that, you know, these researchers are saying heparin cause like heparin induced thrombocytopenia and they gave all these patients uh, heparin in the beginning. So how can we really see all the differences just because of the vaccine? So yeah, that's that, that's one of the major point from this paper as well. Yeah, and, that is what I yes, was confused about yes, too, yes. because they are talking about the vaccine, which I would think that it, it is causing a high platelet count, especially since these clots are starting seven to ten days after the vaccine and that is the amount of time you need for platelet turnover for all the platelets to have completely new platelets but then they ship it to heparin which did not make sense to me yes so thank you very much you're welcome thank you thank you for bringing it up Yeah, for the healthy donor, they just say that, you know, the, uh, it was from a healthy donor. They don't say any, anything besides that. I just I just checked that one. Yeah, it was just a healthy donor being non-symptomatic or healthy donor having not received the vaccine. Because um, I just thought that would kind of answer yes. a little bit um, Joe's question. Yes. But, yeah. being like if they hadn't received the vaccine and they weren't you know aggregating then yes, you true. can make a link to a vaccine it's very 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 weakly but yes, you could yes that's true they, they don't mention anything they just say serum from the healthy donor or the patient with hit they don't say anything healthy donor with the vaccine so i think a lot of <laughs> caveats on this paper so we just have to wait for more research being published on this one it's certainly a good you know starting point though yeah. some insights just caveats that's right. but i think that's something we're getting used to in covid right when you're mm -hmm. researching something so actively it, and it's just like oh we'd love to know the answer but unfortunately like not enough time has passed for us to really do an in-depth study so yeah. You know, kind of getting used to that with these journal clubs, honestly, or it's just like, take this with a grain of salt every time. <laughs> yeah. Let's publish something, you know, for COVID-19 and it might get like this big, big publicity or, you know, we found something on COVID-19 that's, you know, something unique. So I think it's more like this everywhere these days.
you know because most of the time we do research and it's like years long you know we have patients you know we just keep finding just like keep trying but here if they find something they want to get it published you know because they want to let others know oh, we found something you know i think that might be causing these things as well you know they don't want to validate it, but get the data as much as possible outside the world Yes, very important topic, certainly. Yeah. So anyways, five cases of blood clotting out of 140 thousands, right? More than that. I don't know that's high or during a certain period of time. Yes. I, I'm not, I don't know that's high or not. But it seems like to me in the tech home message that this blood clotting is not, is not typical. It's a kind of a typical, right? Yes, yes. So that's make it may, maybe a more link towards the, with the vaccine. Yes, that's right. Yeah, you would, you have a hundred over a hundred thousand people. If you uh, monitor for months, you probably going to find, especially for old people, you're going to find some blood clotting. I guess. Yes. I I don't have the statistics here, mm -hmm. of course I don't know. Yes. Another thing that in the in the Johnson and Johnson vaccination, I don't know maybe six um, patient sample uh, patients suffered from blood clotting. And uh, that could be different. I don't know. This is uh, like, uh, mm. but very low percent though. But it's still, yeah. Some uh, patients have been suffering that kind of um, blood clotting uh, symptoms. Yeah, I think you know, for out of all those millions of people, like somebody might have like, already something going wrong in their body, and they just like overreacted to the vaccine. Maybe that's what it is. You know, we can't just like completely stop vaccination out of million if there is two or three cases. These are these are fairly um, uh, young patient, younger patients. It is not like really uh, above seventy or something like that. You could may expect that having different kind of um, other ailments, but these are fairly um, younger patients. I don't know the entire cohort, but only five patients you showed. I think most of them are like you know, within fifties or something. Yes. Yes. So that's kind of surprising. That's true. I think maybe I will try to do more research on the Johnson and Johnson one. Maybe next week yeah. we can. We can yeah, at least I can. Johnson Johnson vaccine is also adenovirus. Maybe some should do the adenovirus, uh -huh. not just the immunogen, I guess. Yeah. If it is we if it's because the immunogen, the Pfizer, Moderna, they they, they have the same uh, immunogen there. Yes. The same thing basically. Yes. I think people are already doing research on that one, you know, both yeah. the adenovirus. So I don't know, it's because not reported, or I'm sure you have a, a, a hundred million people injected. There will be a lot of people have blood clotting. Yes. It might be not related to vaccine, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. But the adenovirus vaccines are certainly, so I don't know, it has a lot of concern. Yes. Okay, any other questions for UK? Or any other things in general uh, for you want to talk about? Yeah. We still have time. Yeah, I you know, I wanted to find a pathway that might, like, you know, because scientists might be reporting maybe this is causing it. And the only pathway I ended up was like, heparin induced thrombocytopenia and they are already giving heparin treatment to those patients right in the start of their admission so you know it was kind of like confusing to begin with all right hello Hi, okay. so, i was wondering uh if the if they could tolerate this with cholesterol levels. Yes. And see whether these people were prone to have cholesterol. You know, maybe that could help into having this side effect. Yes. I think, you know, the fair way to answer your question is like, we can correlate uh, the vaccination and this thrombosis and thrombocytopenia to so many things, right? Because there are so many pathways or so that is influencing this in our body so three of those patients are already you know like dead so we there is no way of comparing and i think you know but if we can compare 
these kind of effects with like lifestyle, diet, exercise, you know, BMI, everything. But I think, you know, in general, now like they already stopped the vaccine. I think for the sample size, they just have to wait for people to report. And I think it's kind of like hard to get all those data and, you know, correlate to these uh, kind of cases. So. Yeah, in the, in the long term, you know, they can do research like, you know, in vitro, in vivo, everything, uh, multiple pathway analysis, those kind of things. But right now it's like they are getting whatever, you know, they are just gathering whatever information they have from the patients that report, you know, who report to the hospital. And they're just like using those as a tool to find these kind of like correlations. So I think it's kind of hard, but on the long run, we can still do all those researches. Yeah, probably they do have the they would have the the cholesterol uh, levels of these patients, right? Because yes. when you get admitted to the hospital, they do several tests. Yes. So probably they did have them, but you know this would take some time to run all these statistical tests and yes. correlate on this. That's right. Yeah. Very nice presentation. Thank you, Martha. Yes, indeed. And any more questions for UK? Or anything else you want to discuss? All right, if not, everybody have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice See you day. next time. See you. Bye. How do you get that clap? I saw that clap here, right? Clap. So you go to reaction. Where, uh, do you see where there is the share screen and then there is the record? And then there is a little happy face. Okay. Yes. Where it has reaction. You. I will you, wait for the reaction. Yeah. Sometimes I see it. Sometimes I don't see it. That, that's a, depends how you get in, I guess. Yeah. You have yeah. thumbs up. Yep. All right. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Have a okay. Day, Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.